Uh, so, namaste. I'm Pranita. Um, I'm from Nepal. And I'm a passionate feminist and tech enthusiast. So currently, I'm pursuing my PhD in IT at Monash University with Action Lab. And uh, I'm also affiliated with Monash Data Futures Institute. So I believe in developing technologies, uh, technological solution guided by a human-centered approach and rooted in empathy. So before I begin my journey, I'd just like to give a round um, of thank you uh, to Australian Data Science Network for providing me with this opportunity where I can share my story with all of you. So let's start from the beginning, my childhood. So what's the sugar, spice, and everything nice that helped me to become the person I'm today? So the first sugar, spice, and everything nice is my mother. So my mother, who was a feminist herself, she was very passionate about making sure her daughters had the proper education and knew the value of education itself. So uh, she made sure that we understand that we need to be financial, financially independent, especially in a country like ours. So she did everything, even though we didn't have enough financial, uh, we didn't have strong financial background. She made sure that our education was never compromised. And my love for mathematics, I give it uh, to her because she made sure that she used to bring a lot of these math books, which I hated at that time, but I'm so thankful for that now. My other super spice and everything nice is my father. So my father similarly had a very broad thought, like you need to learn to do all kinds of tasks and you need to make sure that you are not dependent on anyone. And that has always stuck through um, my entire childhood to now. So there I was a little girl. I used to be fixing tube wells with him, fixing electric sockets, cutting out telephone wires and no whatnot. I guess he didn't like it when I sort of um, put apart my very fancy calculator to see what it was made of up, and I couldn't put it back together. So he didn't like that part at least. And then I had my mama, which we uh, call uncle. So he introduced me to the world of computers. So he used to bring, he had this, bought this computer that I remember the first time I saw, it was love at first sight for me. I was so amazed that this little machine could do such a thing. And he had these encyclopedias and computer books, and he used to encourage us to read all of these to ensure that our knowledge um, grew with it. So I believe that, uh, I be firmly believe that we need. I need to acknowledge the privilege that I had as growing up because I know that not many of us have this uh, privilege. But all this support from my childhood um, made a very Im impeccable impression of what I am today. So uh, when I joined undergrad, so I did my undergrad in Bachelor in Computer Information System, and it was like a drastic change. So in a class full of uh, 40 to 48 students, we were only six girls. Um, you can see it in the photos. And as as like, I don't know if it's a country thing or anything like that, there were a lot of teasing in the class. Um, and then there were people who were telling like, matter, it doesn't matter whether you are top of the class. Uh, if you're a female, usually you always end up with a job of secretary or typist, even if you are studying IT. So that sort of created a doubt in a way, like, am I in the right field? But I'm so happy that I persisted. I didn't listen to all these um, uh, unnecessary noises. And I persisted and I completed my undergrad. After undergrad, I joined an internship uh, where I was the only girl in a software development department. So that was a new challenge. And later on, I also joined another company as a software developer where I was working as a web developer. So there was a phase, like after two years, there was a phase where I was, uh, it was a stagnant position. So I was feeling a bit like, am I sure this is what I want to do? So I decided I quit my job and I started uh, data science courses. And at the same time, I also worked as uh, or worked in the academics. And at the same time, I joined a, uh, an organization called Women Lead Nepal. Um, it's an organization that focuses on building or co-creating future with women leaders. And uh, through it, I was able to work on different projects that focused on uh, body, uh, uh, body rights, consent, and even developing uh, allies for feminist leadership. And I did all of this while I was applying for my master's degree. So for my master's, I went from all the way from Nepal to China 
and I joined Tsinghua University for their master's in engineering uh, with a focus on computer science and technology. So it was a very drastic change again and a remarkable journey, but it was filled with difficulties. So the education system that was in China and the educational system of Nepal, it's quite different. And for some time I had a major difficulty of just getting in par with my fellow colleagues or my classmates. And I realized I was putting in double the effort and I was starting to develop this imposter syndrome where I was like, I'm not good enough. But um, again, thankfully with all the support I had, I persisted too. And I did my thesis for with curiosity inspired personalized recommendation model. And uh, uh, I have to thank my supervisors, my classmates for supporting me throughout the entire journey. Uh, at the same time, I was also chosen as uh, Google's Women Tech Makers Scholars for 2018. And so before the doctorate journey, like I uh, graduated from my master's in the middle of the COVID. So all of my plan, it literally flew out the window. So I came back and uh, I started working as a lecturer for the same university where I did my undergrad with. And I also joined Anastavil as uh, and started working on their online cheating online examination cheating detection, where I was looking at the sound um, AI use to detect cheating in online examination. And I did this all the while, uh, apply, while applying for my PhD. So again, with the doctorate, I flew all the way from Nepal to Australia at Monash University, and I was chosen as one of the Monash Data Futures Institute Fellows, and I joined Action Lab. I have to again thank all of the members from Monash Data Futures Institute for being so supportive and especially a big thank you to my supervisors from the lab itself. So Roisin, Grace, Pari and Michelle, they have like four strong women behind me who are helping me through all the journey, um, all the difficulties that I've been facing. So currently my thesis revolves around design Designing and developing digital interventions for body dissatisfaction to prevent eating disorder. So I'm doing my thesis with human-centered computing. So here I am like from purely computer science background and I'm moving on to the human-centered computing. So uh, I'm not sure if everyone can relate. So with computer science, it's either, it's, it's in a binary format, right? It's either zero, it's one. But then when you start going towards the human-centered computing, you have all these numbers in between zero to one. And trying to learn that, trying to learn how to understand that the numbers between zero to one has been a challenge itself. But with my supervisors and my colleagues from Action Lab itself, they have been so supportive and helping me throughout the journey. And recently, I've also been chosen as a Monash Institute's Mechanical Engineering's Women in STEM Student Leaders in 2024. So, my throughout my journey i've learned a number of things and i'd like to share like what i want to see going forward is um like uh, i i have been exploring i've been exploring multiple projects like preconception health chatbot single session intervention chatbot for eating disorder and co-designing for projects and create uh, a project for maternity health, where I'm trying to create, uh, where I'm working with a project for creating a novel method for measuring shared decision making. And I'm also working as PhD teaching fellow and EDX tutor. So it's like a multiple things going on all together. So it's important to always explore, explore different projects, explore different opportunities that you receive. And finally, again, exploration like providing the opportunities to women to explore different projects to explore their skills is important and always to take chance as well i believe um uh, we have this pressure like we have to do good otherwise uh, other women might not get an opportunity so there's always this fear or on the back of our mind so they always take chance and then network we need networking opportunities because i wish someone had told me that prior like uh, network as an introvert, it has always been a challenge, but networking opportunities is a must. And then say no to imposter syndrome. Uh, I believe a lot of us face this. So we it's high time we say no to the imposter syndrome and always take a break when you think you need it and always be open to learn, learn, learn. So we need the learning opportunities for our future generation as well.
Um, thank you. If you want to connect with me to LinkedIn, please scan the QR code. But yeah, thank you.